better work. The powers of the supermodels were undeniable in the 90s. On the surface, it might seem like all they do is sell clothes and the idea of fashion itself, but they actually had a lot of influence. Brands, businessmen, anybody that believed that everything a supermodel touched turned to gold wanted to partner up with them. One of those partnerships was the Fashion Cafe, a themed restaurant that combined food and fashion. What could possibly go wrong with those two combinations, right? Well, from deception to money laundering, it turns out a lot can. In this video, we will explore the history of the Fashion Cafe, how it started with the supermodels, and how it ended with Donald Trump. This is the rise and fall of the Fashion Cafe. Theme restaurants were all the rage during the 80s and 90s. There was always one popping up, one of them being Planet Hollywood, a theme restaurant chain inspired by popular Hollywood movies and celebrities. First launched in 1991 in New York City, it found great success by using the influence of famous people. The success of the restaurant caught the attention of Italian businessman Tommaso Budi, who wanted to duplicate that success, but with the supermodels instead. Tommaso Budi was born in Florence, Italy. He was a very ambitious young businessman. In 1989, he moved to the United States and founded the Gourmet Food Delivery Service for Kasha. The business was actually very successful with a long list of wealthy clients, but Tommaso would end up selling his stakes to the company to focus on other business ventures. Seeing the success of Planet Hollywood and Hard Rock Cafe, another themed restaurant launched back in the 70s that was still extremely popular at the time, Tommaso wanted in on the business. The early 90s was also a time ruled by supermodels. They were on the runway, on TV, they were everywhere. Tommaso himself actually dated some supermodels and later married Daniela Pistova. With connection to both the restaurant business and the fashion industry, the Italian businessmen developed a restaurant where people could dine while feeling like they were a part of the fashion world. After recruiting Naomi Campbell, Claudia Schiffer, and Elle McPherson, who were three of the biggest supermodels at the time, Tommaso and his brother Francisco held a pre-lunch party for the new restaurant in December 1994 before officially launching the very first fashion cafe in New York City the following year. The grand opening was a complete success, being attended by supermodels, celebrities, and top entertainers like David Copperfield and RuPaul. Besides the great turnout, the Fashion Cafe initially received mostly positive reviews from the press, with many praising the restaurant's unique atmosphere. Their front door was made to resemble a camera lens, clothing and garments worn by famous individuals were displayed throughout the restaurant, and in the middle was the runway dining table. The Fashion Cafe was such a success that supermodel Christy Turlington who first even called the idea of the restaurant tacky, ended up joining her fellow model colleagues a few months after its grand opening. The founders also renamed the company to Fashion World Co. that following year and made plans to expand the restaurant to other parts of the world, including London, Jakarta, and Mexico City. Once the initial hype started to wear off though, all of the problems of the business started to be seen and criticized. Once consumers got tired of the gimmick, the restaurant struggled to stay relevant. This combined with the business tactic of the owners also would end up contributing to its eventual downfall. The first problem that arose early on was the name of the restaurant. A number of copyright and trademark lawsuits were filed against Tommaso Budi and his company, alleging that he stole the name and idea from another restaurant back in Italy. 
The owner of that fashion cafe revealed that Tommaso himself often visited the place. The cases were dismissed and the company stated that the lawsuits were nothing more than a publicity stunt. Those lawsuits didn't stop the Italian businessman from growing his restaurant chain even further, opening other fashion cafes throughout the world, and also start up new businesses. Eventually, people wanted to know if his business was as successful as he made it out to be. But when asked about the worth of his privately held company, Tommaso never gave any sort of figure or amount, creating a lot of speculation and doubt. Here are three factors that contributed to the fall of the fashion cafe. The first is about how the novelty worn off. Theme restaurants might have been all the rage in the early 90s like the supermodels were, but by the end of the decade, people were just over the gimmick. For the fashion cafe, many critics noted that food and fashion were just not a great combination. Once customers got bored of the entertainment elements and special theme menus and started valuing the quality of the food, many themed restaurants along with fashion cafes struggled to stay relevant. The second factor is the supermodels. Tommaso claimed that the supermodels were part owners of the business and while the ladies did contribute to some aspect of the restaurant, they had no real authority or responsibility. The only thing they were offered was the percentage of the company's future profits, but they did not own any amount of the business. Claudia Schiffer, Elle McPherson, Naomi Campbell, and Christy Turlington were practically walk-in advertisement for the company and received between fifty dollars to $100,000 for every appearance they made. Once Tommaso couldn't pay them anymore, they severed ties with the company. The fashion cafe not only lost their main gimmick, but also the investors that kept the business afloat. The third and main factor for the downfall of the fashion cafe is ultimately Tommaso Booty. According to New York Magazine, the businessman was known for writing bad checks and promissory notes back in Italy. He used that same kind of fraudulent business strategy in the United States, stealing from his own company and not paying taxes. He used all his money to fuel his lavish lifestyle and in the end resulted in the restaurant hitting financial trouble. By 1997, Tommaso couldn't pay rent, the staff, utilities, or the suppliers. And instead of working to rebuild the company, he decided to resign. While the company did assemble a new management team, the restaurant chain couldn't be saved. One by one, all around the world, the fashion cafe was being shut down. The late 90s might have seen the end of the fashion cafe, but it wasn't the end of the Tommaso Booty story. The businessman trying to remodel his image by using his relationship with Donald Trump, who was very well known and influential at the time. Trump endorsed the Italian businessman and defended him from the press. The two even made plans to become partners of a new modeling agency with Tommaso offering his connection to the fashion and modeling industry. While all of that was going down, Tommaso was getting sued left and right. Luigi Palma, a Miami-based eye doctor, filed a $1 million lawsuit alleging that he had illegally extracted the fashion cafe's asset to finance his lavish lifestyle. Valeria Morbito, heir to an Italian construction fortune, sued Tommaso for $14 million, claiming that he had lied about the company's fund and revenue. He was also sued by the Woodrow Wilson Construction Company, and the supermodels also demanded to be paid and be given back the memorabilia donated to the restaurant. But wait, there's more. The law firm Pavian Harcourt sued for $400,000 in unpaid bills, and the Rockefeller Center sued for six months of back rents and utilities. His lawyer, Judd Borstein, defended his client, saying he was an easy target, and argues that Tommaso was a generous, high living, naive foreigner who was not well versed in the American business law. 
Soon after, the Rockefeller Fashion Cafe officially closed its doors after several warrants was issued against the company for unpaid tax. So Tommaso did what he does best, ran away to avoid indictment, this time back to Italy. Trump opened the modeling agency without him and his supermodel wife, Daniela Pistova, got divorced from him. In 2000, Tommaso and his brother Francisco Budi were arrested in Milan at the request of the New York District Attorney's Office. They were charged with 51 fraud counts that include money laundering, stolen property transportation, and wire fraud that could sentence them to 20 years in prison and pay fines up to $24 million. But here's the thing, they were never extradited meaning they were never handed off to the United States to face those criminal charges. The two brothers were eventually charged in Italy, but later were acquitted by the Court of Appeal in 2007. On January 19, 2021, Donald Trump granted a full pardon to Tommaso Budi during his last day as the president, clearing the Italian businessman of his 20-year-old crime. Today, people have mostly forgotten about the fashion cafe, with people choosing to remember it by the supermodels and their involvement over the very messy history and questionable quality of the restaurant chain. With that being said though, it's still one for the fashion book. And while it was a complete disaster in the end, it was one of the things that made fashion in the 90s so legendary. So what do you think about this fashion crime story? Did he get off too easily? Is there some sort of corruption going on? And what do you think about the fashion cafe itself? Comment your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more fashion related videos. I'm Pelly, and remember to keep living that fashion life. Bye!